Hello guys, you're welcome back to Photographics Academy. All right, so we are still on the series on how you can change your flat studio images to amazing, amazing, amazing uh, work of art using hyper-realistic studio backdrops or hyper-realistic backgrounds, whatever you're going to call it. All right, so we are giving out the one we're going to be using in this video for free. Look at the background we'll be using. Okay, so we want to place this lady over here and make it look hyper realistic i remember this particular background we are giving it out in this video for free and we still have other premium ones that we we also we're also going to be giving out for free in the course of this whole uh tutorial that we'll be doing in this period then if you want to make a pre-order of over 500 of this backdrops just go to the description of the video below and you are going to Get all the information you need. Amazing. All right. So without wasting your time, let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to crop the image. Yeah, crop it. Eight by ten. I want her in the center, stack center. Yeah, somewhere around here. Place her just there. Beautiful. Rest. Okay. I'm going to, of course, stretch this out. You can actually use your content aware scale ball. That wouldn't matter because we wouldn't need this backdrop at the end of the day. So let me just ignore the pixel and stretch it out like that. Yeah, beautiful. Do the same thing over here. Okay, so what I'm doing to stretch out is that I picked my rectangular marquee tool. I draw a line like this. Yeah. Then I press Ctrl T, hold my shift and drag it from the other end. It's going to stretch. That's if you're wondering how I was doing what I was doing. All right, so. Let me use clone stamp and fix the flow over here. Oh. Okay, so the next thing I want to do on this particular image is that I'm, I want to use one of our automated retouching action called done for you retouch action. The one you've been hearing me talk about for some time now. So I'm just going to quickly run it on the image and have it quickly retouch our image. So this is a very quick way you can retouch your studio images and get a very high end result. All right, so wait for it to run. We are good. Are we good? Beautiful. Okay, so let's zoom it and see what you did. Nice. Okay, so this is before, this is after, this is before, this is after. Of course, it's affecting my dress ball. I think I love, it. I love what I'm getting. I would have just removed it, removed it from the dress ball. I love what it's doing to the dress. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so I would have just removed it from the dress and targeted just the skin ball. I think I love the contrast that it's bringing in. All right, so we are done with this. We are done with the retouching, just a very quick one. So we're going to separate her from the background. Pick your selection tool, go to select circle. And Photoshop will do the match. Beautiful, we are done. I'm going to select inverse, zoom in a little closer to make sure I have a nice selection. Okay, so I'm noticing a a mistake somewhere so i'm going to trace this back to see if i can fix that i noticed that the retouching action is adding a little bit of red to the image so i'm just going to quickly grab my color balance and drop my reds just slightly we are like that and probably add a little more green we are beautiful so i wanted her skin tone to come back to something warm again beautiful okay so have that fixed we'll have that fixed so I want it just on the skin tone. I don't want it on the backdrop because it's turning my backdrop to green. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to minimize this and just pick up my mask and target her skin tone. Target her skin tone. Yeah, like that. To pick the skin. Switch to gloss icon and just target the skin like that. So we just want it on the skin. I'm going to use the fuzziness a little. Cut the leg over here. I'm going to add that. Wow, that wasn't good at all. So I was just going to paint that plain skin. All right, so have it on the skin. Delete this one. Let's check. What do we have? I have this. Sorry, we deleted our deleted our retouching action. Okay, so have it here. Beautiful. So I'm going to just paint quickly. Paint it into the feet over here. Just uh, well, using details there. Nice one. Do the same thing over here. Check if there are areas the color balance didn't work on. 
tail with the hand. That's the big one. I think I would need a little brightness for the feet. So sorry I'm taking my time to do this, but you have to do this to make sure that your image is properly prepared. Because if you miss these steps, it's going to look weird at the end of the day. So just take your time, make sure your image is properly prepared. If you have a very clean image, you are good to go. Remember, this period we decided we're going to be working with low res images. Because we noticed that a lot of photographers have that as an issue. They have it as an issue where they not everybody uses high-end uh, gadgets. So let's see what we can do for the people that doesn't use high-end gadgets. That's what we are doing, what we are doing at this period. All right, so reduce this a little. Raise the brightness slightly. Yeah, we are good to go. Okay, so we have everything properly done. The next thing we'll be doing now is to separate our image from our background. So select subject. Okay, subject is selected. Selecting var zoom in to make sure your selection is cool. So I think it's coming into the hair a little. So I'm going to minus that. Double uh, duplicate your background by dragging it here. Drag it into this plus icon. Do not use Ctrl J. Drag it into this plus icon. Right click on your image and press layer via cut. It's going to separate the image from the background. Hold your control. Click on the background icon to reload your selection. Go to filter, go to blur, blur the background out until you have a smooth background. Or make sure you do not lose all your shadows. Just something smooth. I think, think we're good here. Press OK. Control D. So we've successfully smoothened out our background. So the next thing we'll do right now is to bring in our uh, hyper-realistic background. So to do that, I'm going to make sure I keep my object layer above every other layer. Then I'll come to the background layer, make it select your background layer. Go over to this one, unlock the layer. You can as well crop if it's not properly cropped at the same size box your image. Then drag it over here, place it over here. And it's going to appear behind. Find your where your anchor point is supposed to be. Yeah, like that. Yeah, find it. Make sure you do not drag your image. Remember, we'll have a duplicate of it in the background. So make sure you do not move your image. All the movements you need to do, do it to the background. All the adjustments you need to make, make it to the background. Keep it somewhere here. Then hold your alternate key and scale in. Yeah, like that. I think it's too much. It's too scaled in. So just take it back a little. Then just increase. So four. Like that. Are we properly increased? Okay, so our image is supposed to be positioned here. Because if we do it like this, she's going to start looking weird. She's supposed to be positioned here. I think the background is still a bit too huge for her. Yeah, like that. Beautiful. So she's supposed to be positioned here, but we are losing out. We are losing these areas because it needs to cover. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick up our rectangular market tool like we always do and just select the floor area like that. Then go into your edit, go to content away scale, hold your shift and drag it. Beautiful. So have it properly selected. Beautiful. Okay, so we can now move the background to make sure it's properly fitted in. Just like that, to thing it through. Okay, so we are good. I could scale it in a little. Beautiful. Okay, so you can try to flip it. Let's see if this composition will work better. The other composition works better. So keep it here. Nice press. Okay, so one more thing I want to do before I blend the whole stuff in is that I want to make sure I reflect this image on the floor, considering that the clothes itself the cotton in the backdrop is reflecting on the floor which makes this a reflective surface so what i'm going to do is i'm going to duplicate my object layer select the one below ctrl t right click and flip vertically so it's going to turn her upside down drag it down drag it down just stack it to the feet we do not need to make sure that they are all positioned just stack it to the feet that's just stack it to the feet like that. Press OK. Change your blend mode to soft light because it's going to work. Then consider the way that the blurring is happening. So looking at the blur, it's obvious they are using a motion blur that is flowing downward. So we are going to apply the same motion blur. Let's remove the mask first. So we we'll apply the same motion blur here. 
go to your blow, go to motion blow. Make sure that your angle is up to down like this. It's then increase your blow. So you're going to notice that it starts stretching in that manner. Are you seeing it? So as you are blowing it, be considering the cutting to make sure you get the same level of blow. Yeah, with them. something like that. So have a little details where it's okay. Then now you can change the blend mode to soft life and you will have a similar one. I don't think that was the blend mode. Let's reduce the opacity. Okay, yeah, this is it. It's working. It's... Okay, so the reason I didn't use blend mode is that I noticed it still had colors on it. So the blend mode is going to take away the color and just give us a shadow, which is not going to be mimicking exactly what we are seeing here. So I think reducing opacity gave us that same effect. That's why we are using opacity. Now let's make the whole thing come together. So this is where the secret is. Go to the background layer, change the blend mode to overlay and watch the match. Okay, so one more thing we need to do, we need to restore the original shadow. To restore the original shadow, go to the background layer. Yeah, this one, the one with blood out. Create a mask for it, take off your brush. So just try to hide it so you can see where the original shadows are falling. So you can now use your mask and Reveal it and you are good to go. Good to go like that. Sorry. Yeah. It's, just reveal it. You don't need to add more shadows. It will just give you the original shadow the image had initially that will make the whole thing look hyper realistic. So this is the image without the shadow. This, after we added the shadow because it just slightly and we are getting a very huge uh, result. Okay. So looking at this image. I'm noticing that there is a high point of light over here. So we need a lot of light on her face to make this reflection. And we need a little cast of her shadow on the wall over here, considering the direction of light. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the image, double click on it to enter my blend diff. Equally go to drop shadow, just like that. Just means it's slightly like it's yeah. pick up your spread. So it spreads out a bit so. I want it to be soft, so I we'll have to reduce the opacity just slightly like that. And so I have our two stars over here. So I'm just trying to mimic the way the light is flowing. Yeah, just make sure it's soft. Let's zoom in a little to see what was happening there. All right, okay. Get it out a little. Okay, so we got it. So is the size that you need to, you need to use and soften it out just like that. Of course, it's a soft light, so it doesn't need to be edged like this. Just like that, but obviously there, just like that. It, so let me show you the image without that shadow we added now. You will see the whole, the huge difference is making. So this is it without the shadow, with the shadow. But I think I need to do a little adjustment. The direction is not matching that of the light. So if the light is flowing like this, the shadow should be pointing downwards. Put it downwards like this. Yeah, reduce the opacity. It's too much. Beautiful. Press OK. So this is without the drop shadow. This is with the drop shadow. Just slightly. And we have amazing result. Now, one more thing that remains for us to do. OK, I think two things actually. We need to uh, put a global color gradient on it. And now adjust her body shape to make everything fit in. So I'm just going to go to my curves probably. Go to red, see what we can do in that area. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, nice. I love the reds. Go to my blues. Let's see. I think I need to add warmness. I need to warm the image up. Beautiful. That. So I'm going to go to my RGB and just try increasing the contrast. Yeah. So I need one more to give it a hazy feel. So I think the shadows need just a little punch of blue. To make the whole thing come together so i'll go to my levels but my blooms yeah and like that so let's go to the shadows shadow area this is yellow okay so just to the shadow area give it a punch of blue like that of course there are many ways you can do this you can probably use your solid colors and let the shadows and punch in your blues and reduce it any way that makes it work for you it's beautiful i think this is working for me i think this is working for me I need a little more contrast. Yeah, that, that beautiful. So one more thing I want us to look at is maybe the selective color. Just trying to play around with my colors and see what I get. Nice. 
see a very rich, beautiful tone. We'll be able to create at the end of the day. Check my yellows. I'm going to have in pink I love. Love it here. Let's check the blacks. Yeah. I it's a little. What's more the magenta doing somewhere in here? Bringing it all together. So maybe we'll check our reds. Check what the magenta has. Okay, so just slightly like this. Check what our yellows have for us in the reds. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. So the last thing we're going to be doing is to apply a color lookup table, just any random color lookup table that looks appealing to you. And you are good to go. I love this. I love this. I love this. So, 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 so. So, so. All right. So I think I saw what I'm going to use already. I'm going to be sticking with this. Yeah, this. Then I'll drop the opacity as much as possible. They feel rather. Yeah. So let's put the whole color grading together. Let's see how much we've affected the image. So this is the image without the color grading. This is the video color grading. See the way you brought it to life. Give it a punch. Before, after. But of course, it's obviously too much. So we have to drop it just slightly like that. So have it before and after. Look at the amazing result we have. Okay, so let me quickly run you through what we did. It's a very simple step. So let's find our history. So it can give us a very quick one. Okay, so first of all, we we cropped our image. After cropping our image, we uh, tried enhancing the image using our retouch for you. Yeah, using our done for you rather retouch action. After doing that, we selected the image, separated it from the background, then applied the background on it. Make sure that your own background is on overlay. See what is going to happen if you do not use overlay. So what's going to happen? It's going to look flat. If you use soft light, it's going to still match, or it's not going to look like she's there. It's going to look abstract. So this is why we are using overlay so that it makes it look like she is there. Now listen, this overlay tree works beautifully only on gray backgrounds or anything within that range. If you are using a different hue, it may not give you exactly the results we are having here because overlay takes away everything that is 50% gray. That's why we are using overlay and see the beautiful results we have. So the secret of getting this particular result we have here is make sure you shoot your image on a gray background, on a gray background, and you will get the amazing result. This is the image before, after, amazing. Or after, before, after. Of course, you can decide to be creative. You can even add creative lighting from here to here. Whatever you want to do, you can now do from here. But I think this is the end of the tutorial. Thank you for watching this amazing video. Remember that this password is up for grabs. Rather not pass not password. This backdrop is up for grabs for free. All you need to do is make sure you watch the video till this point. You must have seen the backdrop if you watch the password rather if you watch it till this particular part. Thank you for watching this amazing video. See you on the next one.